Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name is Mike and this video is all about how to service a mainspring by hand. I'm going to show you how to open the, the barrel, how to remove the mainspring, how to remove the arbor, how to clean it all and then how to reassemble and wind the, the mainspring back into the barrel by hand. Uh, this is all part of the 7025 series um, which is the giveaway that I'm doing at the end. Uh, but I'm also going to use a, another Seiko uh, mainspring barrel, which is a, from a 6119, I think, uh, because it's got a slightly different lid, uh, a more common way of opening the, the mainspring. The, this is the, the 7025 one. That's how big it is. Um, and they're quite fiddly to open, really. So I just want to give you a couple of examples, because you might be watching this and you might be doing a Seiko, but you want to learn how to open the barrel, first of all. So this would be a good... Uh, Good demonstration. Before I go on, uh, safety first. Mainspring by hand, certainly for the first time, you run a risk of uh, letting it go and it uncoiling. And mainsprings will flick and they'll fly, and yes, they will end up in your eye. So make sure you've got eye protection. Uh, if you're a glasses wearer like me, wear your glasses. Otherwise, a pair of safety glasses, or better still, an OptiVisor. Um, obviously this has got magnification on it, um, these things are quite small, that's going to age you no end at all, but obviously please look after your eyes guys. The next shot will be some close-ups as per usual and you'll see me opening both types of barrel and then we'll move on from there. I'll put the arbor onto the microscope as well to show you a little bit more about how that is, uh, how that looks and how it works and uh, so Stay tuned for the next bit, that's close up. Thank you. Okay, here we are on the bench, and we've got two barrels in front of us. The one on the left is from a 6118, uh, I believe, Series Seco, and this is the 7025 for the giveaway. Um, the principles are exactly the same, only the lid uh, is different. And obviously I brought this one in here to show you, because this is more of a typical opening on this one, than it is on this one. So if you are tuning in or if you've uh, to, to learn how to open a, a barrel and it's not a Seiko you're working on, it's probably most likely going to be one like this. So how do we open them? We get a piece of steel. Uh, what I wanted to actually show you was the uh, differences. So on the 6 Series, the opening or the lid is on the top here. So Bring my tweezers in you can just sort of see the how it fits on there whereas on the 7 series it's not on the top because it's on the sides as you can see it's sort of split which makes this a lot more problematic than this one so we'll start with the six and all you want to do is have it on a a hard surface so preferably a piece of steel uh, if you are what I like to call speed servicing, you want to do something in a hurry, uh, then you could use a uh, case knife. You just want something hard to put the barrel on to press down. So let's just see if I can zoom in a bit more. Make sure that it's the opening is facing up. So you're not going to be able to open it this way, but you are this way. And all we want to do is push down where the teeth are and try not to push down on the top. And that has already opened. I didn't hear it. But as you can see, the lid is off. Now, what you don't want to do is it's springing out. So as I've said before, make sure you've got some something to protect your eyes. And usually they stay in, but sometimes they can even let go now. It depends on how delicate you are, because that bit you can see at the top here, is uh, part of the arbor uh, so that is actually going straight through the mainspring itself uh, sometimes it's easier just to lie them down trying to do this on camera is uh, a lot more difficult for me than it is with my uh, normal routine there we are so the barrel is off and you can see on this particular one that the barrel lid is quite worn so it's had a lot of use, uh, this, this particular mainspring. 
there it is uh, all coiled up okay so at the moment it's pretty safe so I'll put that to one side well what what I would say actually first of all here is very this is the very very important part okay is to look at the rotation of the mainspring and take a photo at this point I haven't done all that many uh, mainsprings in the great scheme of things it's something I've learned probably over the last uh, seven or eight months to do by hand and my part of my learning curve was that I took uh, some mainsprings out and I wound them back in the wrong way and you don't know unless you're trying to test so you could put it all in you can spend a long time trying to get the arbor back in you put the lid on you rebuild the entire movement and then you wonder why you can't get any power into the spring uh, it's very frustrating because what will happen is the arbor will rotate but there's a little sort of latch on the lava at uh, the la latch on the lava <laughs> latch on the on the arbor that hooks into the mainspring to make it tighten which i'll show you under the microscope so if you do put it in the, the wind it the wrong way uh, that latch just keeps clicking over so you think you've got some tension on the spring and then it'll just click and unwind and unwind and unwind and that is definitely not desirable so please once you got to this stage always take a photo so okay for our uh, seven series a lot more tricky I'm going to try and zoom out a little bit. Now, you need something to sort of prise that apart a little bit. And I'm going to try and do this on camera for the first time by hand using a knife. Now, I've done these before with a knife, it's not a problem. Uh, but doing it on camera, which hampers my vision, uh, just makes this a little bit more entertaining. So if you don't mind, I'll just take it away a sec where I can actually see it and see if I can get it started. Okay, sorry about that guys, but uh, it is a bit fiddly and I don't want to lose my fingers for the sake of this video. But as you can see, because you don't, again, you don't want to damage these teeth, that's vital. So I've got the knife just to start it and then I'm just Trying to keep that in focus a little bit. Just trying to lever it open and go round. Because once I've got it a certain way, I can either get my tweezers in there or a screwdriver just to ease it off completely. Which actually, it's there. Okay, there's the inside. This one, I can tell you now, is looking a little bit uh, dirty. So this definitely needs a service. Now then, if we compare that to the 6 Series, hopefully you guys can notice that this one is wound different to this one. So one's left-handed, one's right-handed. And if you were going to have a winding tool, you'd need two different winding handles uh, to do this operation. So we'll take one of these out by hand. I'll show you the method that I use to get that out safely. So to wind it out uh, by hand, it's always good that you might have a bit of a fingernail. Because at all times you want to be trying to hold at least one side of the barrel and all the coils because once you start this you've, it'll go if you let go it'll go and that is not what you want to do so I'll just get it started with my tweezers so we just try and get one coil out enough like so that I can get one thumbnail underneath not the time to lose focus. There we go. So you get the other thumb underneath. 
and then you're going to work it from one side to another okay if you do it nice and carefully and slowly the arbor will stay in the middle of the coil if you're too rushed it can fly off you don't want it to fly off those things are really hard to find and to replace you're probably going to need a donor Uh, so incidentally while I'm just doing this we've uh, I'm using the 6 series uh, barrel here for the demonstration in part because if I do have a mishap while on camera at least it's not with the um, giveaway watch the last thing I want to do is lose a part for you guys for the lucky winner on there so as you can see it's getting a little bit longer now as we get towards the the end I might need to try and take it off the screen to see if I can zoom out I can let maximum out because the last bit is where it's called the bridle and that can be where most of the power is within the spring is rather interesting because it keeps hitting the camera <laughs> as it coils around which is not desirable there we go see did you hear that that's where the bridle is there it is that's where all the power is at so this is the bridle don't worry about that kink too much because that's where the bridle ends up kinks anywhere else are not desirable and it's this sort of s shape as we go up to the arbor there now if we just zoom in now it should be pretty uh, straightforward enough to just unclip that like so okay so that's how to get the mainspring out we'll put this little thing under the microscope I think so that I can just quickly show you that close up uh, then I'll show you how I clean the mainspring and then how we wind it back in okay so here we are on the microscope uh, looking at the arbor uh, this end here is where the screw goes for the ratchet wheel and then this would be into the bottom part which I can't point to there would be in the bottom of the main plate and what we're looking at is this little cutout let's find some better tweezers this little cutout uh, just here at the back excuse my cat in the background um, now that is what is going to hold in the mainspring in the center coil it's just run out of shot there so you can see it's like a little latch so as I said before, if you get it, if you put the mainspring in and wind it in the wrong way, uh, that's just going to keep going over and over and over, and not engaging with the the mainspring at all. Uh, as you can also see, it's quite grubby. Um, to clean these, again, put it in the ultrasonic, um, or just use a large rod and cone. Okay, so this is how I clean the um, the mainspring. Sometimes I'll be wearing finger cots for this, but I'm just going to bring out a little jam jar of um, Renata. You could again use alcohol or you could use uh, lighter fuel. And then I get a bit of watchmaker's paper and I just tear it down, fold it over a few times to make this sort of little square shape. And then I'm just going to dip that in the solution a little bit move it away and put the lid on because it stinks and I'm just going to wipe it with uh, the paper so I'm going to open the paper out like so 
wrap it both sides around that bridle for instance and gently wipe and straight away you'll see some dirt and then similarly with the main coil uh, so I press on firmly uh, but you don't want to kink it so don't force it just slide it bit by bit as you can see keep feeding it through now obviously there comes a point where you can't do all of it but straight away there we go that's what you're dealing with a lot of old oil and to get in those parts I guess you you get the picture really I don't really want to do the whole thing here you might want to do that one or two times now uh, the principle of this video really is to show you how to take it out and put it back in uh, if you were to oil the mainspring uh, I'd recommend doing the same process so use a little bit of piece of paper dip it in your um, well I use uh, Mobius 9010 just put a little bit on that and then wipe it over and then that will be your mainspring uh, oiled enough alternatively don't oil it and then once it's wound in you can put some oil on the top of the coils I've seen a lot of people do that before and then once the the, uh, the, the the spring becomes under tension, the oil will move around and coat the entire spring. So to get it back in, first of all, we're going to look at the, um, the barrel again. And we will need to just put a little bit of oil in there. So the principle is you use... They call it braking grease, really. Um, so you'd put a little bit on the barrel wall here. And the principle of that is, is that when the mainspring is fully wound or overwound, that it actually moves within the barrel uh, so it doesn't cause too much damage to the mainspring. Uh, too much oil makes it very difficult to wind in, certainly by hand. Um, using the right oil is quite important um, now I've read lots of different things everybody uses different stuff I've been told before that I'm not using the the correct stuff because I use uh, this which is Mobius 80 sorry 8200 and I've been told that this is a bit too runny um, but hey some grease is better than no grease so all I'm going to do is get some on my oiler. I need a bigger oiler than the one I've got. Let's see if I can show this on camera. I'm just going to put... I put a little bit sort of in quarters. The idea being that that will spread as well. So hopefully you can see that, because I can't see it very well. <laughs> okay, now it's time to wind it in. So here's the tricky part, and the part I've probably been dreading to try and do on camera. So first of all, you've got to try and calculate which way you're going to be winding in. The bridle always wants to be kind of on the inside like that. And you're going to pick up the, the barrel and I try to get as much of that sort of, it's hard to show, loop round as possible. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on with my thumb and I'm going to lick it round. Keep trying to hold it in place with my right thumb while feeding it in with my left. As I say, the bridle bit is the hardest because it's when you get to 
this bit where it's just trying to show you that where it's the last bit to go in it can sometimes be quite tricky so again feeding it in there we go so now all the bridle is against the barrel wall I'm just try and zoom in for you can get it into focus and then we just need to carefully wind it in. I'm putting a lot of pressure on here because that will just fly out at a moment's notice. And you don't want to kink any of the hairspring. So it's just feeding a little bit at a time. Never let go. So you have to excuse me if I'm not talking too much, but obviously I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing. And I just hope that this comes across quite well. And that you can kind of see what I'm doing because I can see that the camera's not being my friend on focusing. So I just feed it in with my left, push it down, and hold it in position with my right thumb. And it uh, pays to have fingernails at this point. And as you get closer to the end, I guess there's a bit more at stake uh, with it uh, springing back out. Although once you've got past the bridle part, it is considerably easier. Again, just keep feeding it, feeding it. I'm trying to do it fast because I don't want to waste all your time watching this. I know it takes, you know, three or four minutes to get it in. We're nearing the end now, look, as you can see. Now there is a thought that goes through my head that if you were clever enough to pick up the arbor and try and get it in the hole, that you might be able to feed it in at this point, but I've never tried that. And for anyone that's a bit more experienced than I am, who might just happen to be watching this, if you've got any other tips, um, anything that I can learn from, uh, I'd be grateful so you can always uh, you know put some comments below might help me and the wider community so there we have at the moment the spring all wound in uh, a lot of the times also I'll do this with finger cuts I forgot to mention that um, now I can lie that flat and I know that's not going to move I also know it's been wound the right way because compare with the 7 series it's the opposite way. Uh, the last thing that remains is the tricky, other tricky part which is to get the arbor in position. Alright so the arbor's quite difficult. First thing you want to try and do is get that center coil over the hole like so. And again be aware that this thing might want to pop out and with the arbor the uh, screwed on this particular one the screwed hole is going through there 
because this is the top. And it's also good practice to oil the arbor, certainly where the, uh, the little clip is. So you would just use a bit of oil and dab it on there. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to try and use my fingers. So you want to drop it in. And they often do this. They go in on the wonk. So you can see it's popping out the back there. I'm just pushing down and round. I think that is actually in. And then you'd want to get the lid. I'm doing that off camera, so put the lid over the top, line it up. And that's not quite, is that closed? I can't tell from where I'm sitting. Yes. Sorry, I almost doubted myself there. So there we are, the lid is on safely. I've had it actually before, I'll just touch on this, where I haven't quite put the lid on correctly and it's just been up a fraction. And then when, when you rebuild the movement, it almost sort of does this motion, uh, which makes the watch not run properly at all. And it took me quite a while to diagnose that. So always check that your lid is on correctly. Um, a side note as well that I've been told before is if you wanted to try and test your um, mainspring, you could use what, th well, this is called a pin vise. So you could, and the pin vise just opens up like so. So you could use the pin vise onto the um, the arbor. This pin vise is particularly stiff. So just excuse me while I try and do it uh, off camera. which I can't, it's refusing to play ball. Okay, so it's on there, and I'm turning, and I'm turning, and I'm turning, and I'm not getting any clicks, so I know that that is fine. So, there we are, next part in the series. So, that's how I would uh, hand wind and service a uh, mainspring for a watch. So that's it for this particular video. The next part in the series is going to be the assembly of the 7025. Uh, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up, please. If you want to see more, subscribe. And don't, for click, don't forget to click the, uh, the bell button, which will uh, alert you when I post the, uh, any up and coming videos. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.